The final verses in this morning's Torah portion recount one of the strangest rituals in the entire Jewish tradition, a ritual that's known as the Egla Arufa ceremony. And here's what that ritual entailed. If a corpse was found in a field and the cause of death was unknown, that corpse was taken to the nearest city. The elders of that city would then take a young heifer, a calf, and they would sacrifice that heifer, symbolizing atonement for the unsolved crime. Standing over the body of the sacrificial calf, the elders would wash their hands, and then they would recite the following words. Yadinu lo shavchu et adam hazeh, ve'eneinu lo ra'u. Our hands did not shed this blood, nor did our eyes see it done. Accept this atonement for your people, Israel, and do not hold your people guilty of the blood of this innocent person. In other words, the elders of the city would ask God to absolve them of any guilt for the death of that body. And the rabbis of the Talmud raise an important question, an obvious question, but an important question about this ritual. Why would the elders of the city need to be absolved of guilt in the first place? Clearly, they didn't kill this person. They just happened to be the elders of the city closest to where the body was found. So why would they need to ask God to be absolved of guilt? In fact, the rabbis of the Talmud tell us that what the elders were really saying with their declaration of innocence was this. This innocent person never came to our door to seek refuge. He never came to us to ask for help or for food or for anything. Had he come to us, God, then surely we would have helped him, but he never came. So please, God, absolve us of our guilt. We cannot possibly be held responsible for this tragedy. And as I was reading through these verses this past week, it occurred to me that this ritual, this ritual of asking for absolution for the murder of a person whose death you are not directly responsible for, comes from a place of deep-seated guilt. When the elders of the city asked to be absolved, it's because they knew that even if they weren't guilty for the death, they were, in some sense, responsible for the death. They may not have physically killed that person, but they also did not do everything they could have done to prevent that person's death. They didn't do everything in their power to create a society in which disagreements are resolved peacefully, not through violence or through murder. They didn't do everything they could have done to build a world in which such tragedies do not take place. As Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel once said, in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. And that is precisely the sentiment that President Isaac Herzog, the president of the State of Israel, channeled on Monday when he spoke at the funeral of Hirsch Goldberg Polin, the 23-year-old American-Israeli citizen who was senselessly, brutally murdered by Hamas after spending 11 months in captivity. In his eulogy on Monday, President Herzog acknowledged that while Hamas may be guilty for Hirsch's death, all of us are in fact responsible. As he said at the funeral, Hirsch, I stand here today as the president of the state of Israel with a shattered heart. And I beg for your forgiveness. I ask forgiveness from you and from Carmel, from Eden, from Elmog, from Alex, from Ori, and from all of your loved ones. And I apologize on behalf of the State of Israel. We failed to protect you on October 7th, and we failed to bring you home safely. Now our hearts are broken, shattered into pieces, and we have an urgent and immediate task to do everything possible to save those who can still be saved. This is the supreme moral, Jewish, and human obligation of Medinat Israel to its citizens, and we did not fulfill our duty. 
we now have a sacred and shared obligation to stand up and bring them all back home for the spirit, resilience, and unity of Israel and the Jewish people. In other words, what President Herzog said is that Hamas is guilty, but all of us, and not just the government of Israel, but all of us, all Jews all over the world, are responsible for letting Hirsch and letting the rest of the hostages who have not survived slip through our fingers. We are responsible for not doing enough to fulfill our sacred obligation to bring them home. And Rachel Goldberg said as much in her own heartbreaking eulogy for her beloved son, Hirsch. As she said on Monday, Hirsch, I deeply and sincerely request your forgiveness. If there was something we could have done to save you and we didn't think of it, I'm sorry. We tried so deeply and so desperately. I'm sorry. And I am sorry too. I am deeply sorry on behalf of all of us. If there is something that we could have done to save Ori, Eden, Alex, Carmel, Almog, and Hirsch, and we didn't think of it, I'm sorry. We could have tried harder. We could have done more. We could have all worked to create a society in which innocent boys are not abducted from music festivals, thrown into underground tunnels for nearly a year, and then senselessly murdered. Unlike the Egla Arufa ritual described in this morning's Torah portion, we should not be asking for absolution. We should be taking responsibility. Because in the words of our tradition, Kol Israel Arevim Zebazeh, every Jewish person is responsible for one another. Or in the words of Abraham Joshua Heschel, in a free society, some are guilty, but all are responsible. Shabbat Shalom. Please rise for Chatzikadesh, page 184.